go through your equations, and then you know that you're never going to overpay for a product again. You got your margins, there's no more guesswork. Hi, I'm Tyler Braun, COO here at With Ease, and today I'm going to show you how to calculate your margins on the fly in under 10 seconds. So, first thing that you want to know when you're looking at an item when you're out uh, wherever you source your used products from or new products is you want to be doing your homework on what your expected sell price is, okay? So, before you go out, you want to really you want to know what you're looking for. You want to be able to look at something and be like, "Okay, I recognize that. I know I know probably about how much that's going to sell for." That's going to be your starting point on all of this. If you don't if you don't know what something's going to sell for, doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, I see all these videos on on YouTube about like which items to look out for, which type of items, like like the flip clocks. But what really matters is, are you gonna buy that at the right price? Are you gonna buy that at the right price to make your margin, to make your profit? So once you once you know your expected sell price, you're looking at your item, and you want to start with yeah you know, a percentage of that. Okay, so first off eBay and Amazon fees. All right, so I'm uh, I'm a little overestimating this a little bit. I like to overestimate so that I'm not like left left guessing like, oh where'd my profit go? It's because I underestimated my expenses. All right, so 15%. I throw that in there right at the very beginning. Also, a lot of people forget about this is that there's a chance that your item will be returned, especially working with eBay, where there's used items, anonymity eBay is a, a buyer-based platform, so it's really easy for people to return your stuff, even if it's perfectly fine. We all know this. Um, so I like to say about a 10% chance of return. In reality, it's probably going to be more like 7%, but let's just do 10% to be safe, so we have a nice, even 25%, one quarter of your expected sell price. Okay. Now you have your handling cost. Now, you might think that, all right, packing photos doesn't cost me any money. Um, because I don't have employees. But if you want to be paying yourself for your time doing those things, you should really incorporate some sort of cost, billing, billing yourself from yourself, I suppose, um, for the packing and the photos. So for shipping, of course, the larger the item, the more the shipping cost is going to be. Um, and that's probably the main thing that affects these. Packing, larger items will generally take a little bit longer to pack. Some can take up to 20 minutes to build your own box, um, wrap the item, uh, put all the packing in there, you know, pack it all up. Sometimes it's heavy, you gotta weigh it, all that kind of stuff. Um, then you got your photos. Your photos generally take a few minutes each, a little bit longer for the large items. Don't take very long for the medium and small, but that's something to remember that you are spending your time taking these photos, packing this. And then of course you have gas. So gas is when you go out and actually find the item. You gotta put that in somewhere. You might as well put it into your margin on the item. So here I have large. It's generally gonna cost you about 30 to $60 for, for the whole process, okay? These aren't exact numbers. These are kind of round, rounded numbers to make them easy, make them nice uh, ending with zero numbers. Um, so they're, they're kind of estimated. Uh, medium is gonna generally cost you about 10 to $20. And then small, uh, $5. Now, the, to designate these sizes, large is anything about the size of like a, like a VCR or like a subwoofer. I designate a medium item as anything smaller than a loaf of bread. And now you got your small. Small is anything that can fit in a first class envelope. And that's going to be really cheap. Small items, I love small items. They're so cheap and easy to deal with. I put in a nice even five for those. So now on to your equation. So I realize this is taking much longer than 10 seconds to explain, but when you get it down, this, this is so quick. Um, so you think about your expected sell price. You subtract 25% of that, just take a quarter off of it. Estimate the size of your item, take that amount of money off of it. And that gives you your break even price. So, yo, Henry, do you mind uh, tossing me just something random real quick? Sweet, all right, GoPro. From, from the sitting on the office desk, I guess. Uh, so here we have a nice uh, GoPro used but good condition, Hero 3. 
Now I know from experience off the top of my head that these tend to go for about $70 on eBay. Uh, $70 used. So let's start here. All right. $70 expected sell price. Now we got 25% of $70, um, which is about 17, 17 bucks, something like that. I'm just going to say 15, um, close enough. Um, so now we're down to 55 handling costs. This is medium. It'll fit in a medium flat rate. I'm going to say another 15. So break even price is $40. If I pay $40 for this, I'll make exactly zero profit. That's, uh, that's pretty close. So let's see what, what do I actually want to pay for this. How much profit do I want to make for my time finding this item? I like to say break even price divided by two. So break even price is 40 divided by two, I get 20. The most I'll pay for this is $20. Now that looks like it's a $50 profit, but you have to subtract your 25% and your handling cost. So that's $30. You're really making $20 by finding this and paying $20 for it. So would I like to get it for less than $20? Yes, definitely. I would try to get this as cheap as I possibly can. I would say someone just trying to get rid of it might let this go for, tw uh, for $10. The uh, break-even price, 40 divided by 2, 20. That's your max buy price. That's the max I would buy this for. So let's do another one. All right, here we have a Apple uh, wireless mouse, A1296. Um, now these are going for the bay, on the bay, for about seventeen dollars each okay now this is a small item so what are we gonna do twenty five percent that's about um, four dollars and then we got so seventeen minus four thirteen minus five this will go uh, first class easily we got eight dollars eight dollars is our break-even price divide that by two max buy price four dollars I'm not gonna pay more than four dollars for this if they want five dollars I am walking away I'm walking away because there's going to be other items. It's easy to buy something, hard to sell it. Remember that. I would love to get this for two bucks. Someone trying to get rid of it? One dollar. Offer him a buck. Then you got yourself seven dollars profit. Obviously the cheaper you can get it, the higher your profit margin is going to be. So let's, let's pretend I'm, I'm doing this in a real world scenario. Let's see if I can do this in under ten seconds, okay? I know you're thinking, all right, that was quite a long presentation. Let's see if I can do this in under 10 seconds like I've been saying. So throw me one more thing, something random. Cool, uh, Beats wireless headphones. Um, I think these are going for around 100 bucks, all right? Um, it's, a nice, it's a nice even number, that's my guess for these, okay? So let's start right now. 25% of 100, 25. Medium size, 10 to 20. I'm gonna overestimate it, I'm gonna say 20. 45 bucks, break even price, 55. Divide that by two, 22 is the most I wanna pay for these. Probably 20 bucks. I'll probably start 15, offer them 15, see if they take it. If they don't, hop up to 20. If they don't take that, I'll walk away because I know it might not be worth my time. So what I would recommend that you do actually is we're including in the um, description a link to actually a picture of this whiteboard here. What I would do is I would make your own little cheat sheet, take a picture of it on your phone so you know that you always have it with you and I would just bring that to uh, wherever, you, wherever you source your products from. So, you know, like uh, garage sales, whatever. Bring it so that you can just check it real quick, go through your equations, and then you know that you're never gonna overpay for a product again. You got your margins, there's no more guesswork. All right, well, I hope you got some good stuff out of this. Have a good day, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.